Hi, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the live this morning, but it is very, um, very interesting for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. We're a little, um, can you see everything? Okay. So, um, oh my gosh. Okay. It's, it's a little bit crazy today. I'm just going to adjust you a little there. Hope you can see okay. Okay, I'll stay on this end of the board so you guys can see what's going on. Yeah, so kind of crazy, crazy busy day today. Uh, too many phone calls and all that kind of thing. And so anyways, um, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to do something... I am so unprepared. I was just running, running, running this morning. So, uh, but that's okay. Hey, Judy. Hi, good morning. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get started with a few things here. And, um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. We're going to get started. That's for sure. Okay. I just have to get a little bit organized. And uh, it's so funny, you know, because when you do this, like, um, often, hey, Monique, hi, good morning. When you do this every day, like five days a week, you know, there's some days that it, you're just, it's just not going to go smoothly and that's okay. So what I'm looking for, because I had lots of phone calls right up until like five after 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, make a, uh, salsa but we're gonna make it mango and we're going to make it fermented. So what I'm looking for was, um, yeah, <laughs> was just chopping this up. Let's just do it, let's just do it. So anyways, what I did was I, um, I bought a couple of, um, like a bag of mangoes that were, that were um, discounted and and they're a little wrinkly so i'm not sure how we're going to make out with that so i'm hoping that we do mango salsa um but i couldn't see through the bag so you know i kind of thought um but they looked pretty good but then you know sometimes with those mesh bags you can't really tell so anyways yeah so fun 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 so we're going to add um some tomato we're gonna add some onion i'm just gonna cut the end of the onion off and we um we're keeping these little onions because we can plant them in the garden and they grow stuff which is super cool so i'm always saving my little onion ends and um yeah so so for the new people that are here today the onions are anti-inflammatory, just so that you know. Uh, they do all kinds of really wonderful things for the body. And the tomatoes also. So the tomatoes, um, they have, um, there's been a lot of research with the tomatoes, with the um, having the uh, actually anti-inflammatory. And even though people nightshade and that they're inflammatory because of that uh, apparently when they're cooked um, dr. Michael Greger says that they are um, well they're super good he says they're anti-inflammatory when they're cooked and also um, in general they're anti-inflammatory and also that the um, they're really really good for the prostate when they're cooked and especially good for menopause so you know, you want to check out Dr. Greger's website, and he wrote the book. <gasps> hey, Darlene, good morning. Hi. Um, he wrote the book, um, How Not to Die, and he has a fantastic website with all of these nutrition facts called nutritionfacts.org. So, yeah, so we're going to do this salsa, and I have to tell you guys... You know, that fermented salsa, the regular, you know, uh, tomatoes, peppers, uh, fermented salsa, 
It is so fantastic. We're out of it again, and I hate boring you guys with making it over and over again. But I just can't say enough that that fermented salsa is the most fantastic um, tasting thing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to ferment this salsa too, this mango, and the, and the mango is nice. I was afraid it might not be. The other one's a little more wrinkly. But I'm, I am trying to take advantage of all the fantastic fruit that's out there right now um, that's ripe and... Um, so I picked up a bag of these mangoes and then also um, some peaches. So I haven't got a plan for the peaches. What do you guys think? It's so much fun to be able to, um, to share um, recipes with you guys and just decide kind of on a whim what we're going to do with that stuff. So there is a way of slicing the mango. You have to kind of figure out how the pit goes because the pit's kind of a sideways thing. And um, so anyway, I'm going to go like that. And I think that's pretty much so that you can get an actual slice there. And then I will, uh, <laughs> I'll be gentle with the knife and just trim it up. So we're going to do this one and this will be a um, so as much as we can get off of the um, off of the mango and then you can you can always chew around the edge of the seed if you want so I'm gonna do this one too so yeah so the fermenting process is so crazy incredibly good for your um, anything fermented right it en enhances and brings in the um, the good bacteria in your intestine it has everything your gut health has everything to do with your um, immune system and keeping you healthy. Now, see, this one it has a really kind of not not pretty skin on it, but it um, it's pretty good on the inside, which is awesome. So, yes, that's really great to be able to have these mangoes here. And so... Um, yeah, so, and of course the mangoes, you know, you guys know this, the mangoes are so good for digestion. They are really, really good for the um, colon. Uh, they have um, lots of fiber, you know, for your, for your intestine and your colon, and your digestion. Um, they have enzymes as well, of course. I mean, all fruits and vegetables do, but they're specifically um, have extra enzymes and extra antioxidants in them. scavenging, scavenging, however you say that, uh, free radicals, and, and they're really good for weight loss too. So, you know, they've just got like everything in them. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this first, and I am totally unprepared today. Um, I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to put it into a bowl and then add more tomatoes because I, if I overfill it, it's going to be really hard to turn. Which is probably a good thing I forgot the bowl because my hands are sticky with the mangoes, so I have to rinse them off anyway to run the little machine. So I will be right back and just rinse my hands off and grab the bowl. And so, okay, well, I don't know if this is going to be big enough, but it, <laughs> it's what I have right, right now. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it's just been such a such a crazy busy morning it was like oh man how am I gonna make it here by 11 okay so this is the handy dandy machine you can use whatever you want I really like this because um you can really regulate the size of the, of the chunks oh and you know what we need a um We need the garlic to Okay, so we're gonna add this all together. And uh, is Jane here? Oh, Jane. Okay, so let's see. Mm, too chunky. So yeah, so it's so nice. You know, if you can make your own salsa, it's just fantastic. And we made so many um, 
cucumber salads last week because I have so many cucumbers and I want to do pickles this week and um, you just get some of those bigger chunks of tomatoes down there. Um, yeah, we did fermented pickles. We did four cucumber salads. We did cucumber salad with fruit and raspberries and pineapple and all that kind of stuff. A little more. This is good for the arms. I can really just get it going. Much easier to do um, when you're standing up so you can put your weight into it, but then the video cut off my head. Okay, so it is a little mushier with the mango because it's softer, right? So it's not quite as um, chunky. Uh, but what we're going to do, put that in there. And um, yeah, so it also, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you guys have tried it, but um, quite a while back and many times over, <laughs> I've bought the um, Paul Newman mango salsa. And so because of the sweetness, I think with the mangoes, it just really adds that. Uh, extra beautiful flavors so with the uh, with the sweetness with the mangoes and so your peppers have vitamin C also in them I'm gonna add a yellow pepper and uh, that was the other thing I did this week was I dehydrated peppers so that I will have dehydrated peppers this winter and I don't know about you guys but um, you know, I don't know how things are going to go this winter with, um, because we get so much for our produce from California. And, um, and so I don't know, but I would stock up if I were you guys, because there's quite a bit of, uh, speculation for lack of a better word. There's quite a bit of speculate speculation going on quite a bit and all the speculations, um, you know, anything can happen, right? So, so I have been going and getting the sales on the, on the, um, you know, the produce on the end aisles or anything that's in on sale or bulk or marked down or whatever and preserving it. So dehydrating has been, you know, I've been dehydrating all day, every day. And, um, awesome thing. To preserve this little this little stem doesn't want to come out oh it, it almost feels like it's going right through that's really different oh it's got a really deep stem interesting this is not my tomato I mean it is now my tomato but it's not one that I grew it's one that I bought so um, but I do have little tiny baby green tomatoes. I know I'm very behind everybody else. My garden was just, you know, so slow because of all the slugs and everything. And those slugs are still out there. And so, um, yeah, I had slugs and that really slowed everything down. And then also now for whatever reason, one thing or another, I got little aphids on my um, kale, which is really so disappointing. So um, I've been doing the little soap and water spray thing and everything, but I didn't quite catch it in time. So um, I didn't really realize because I, the kale and the turnips were all together. <laughs> they were just such a big bunch, you know, all hanging out together. And so I didn't really realize uh, what was going on in time and so anyway I did pull the kale out and um, I didn't want to waste it so I washed all the aphids off and I dried the kale <laughs> they just boiling hot water and then washed everything really really carefully got rid of anything with holes in it but there were a lot that it was just like just little bits of stuff on there so yeah so I didn't want to waste that so uh, what I wanted to do here was um, add the, uh, the garlic and I have a piece here and I have more over there. 
And what I will also add here, I'll add it, is a piece of the beautiful, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just looking at the comments here, I'm trying to see over or under my glasses, right? Can't see over them, can't see with them, can't see without them. Okay, there's one little piece of garlic. And then I have this beautiful garlic here. This is from um, Joanne Callender at One Tree Farms. And this is the roasted garlic. So that's pretty special as well. So uh, she's here in Port Alberni. And oh, am I frozen? Did your screen freeze? Facebook's been so much fun the last couple of weeks. It just keeps doing weird things. As far as I can see, I think I'm still on. And if I'm frozen, then that's um, that you're not missing much. <laughs> Today's just been, oh my God, it's so funny. Okay. And I'm going to grab another garlic too, because I didn't bring enough over here. So I'm going to run and grab that. And the other I'm gonna do keep washing my hands off um, is add a little, little adding the ginger to the salsa adds uh, you know just that extra little kick just super nice to have in your salsa in my opinion I love ginger um, but I think I will chop it up a little more just because these little blades I don't want it to get too caught up and so I'm going to um, add more and this is actually so exciting my own home just super awesome and um i like to squish them down of course it doesn't work very good when they're new works really good for last year's garlic you know if you if you give it a good smash um it usually like breaks it down and then um it kind of shreds in, you know, when you squish it, it kind of uh, cuts itself, you know, like into shreds. And then you can just uh, slice across the length and you're done. But this garlic is so fresh, it just doesn't want to do that. So that's okay. I don't need it too cut up because we're going to use the little blendy, blendy things. And can I fit one more tomato in there? I'm going to try it. I might have to do two batches. But maybe not. Maybe not. So um, another exciting thing that had happened. Oh, I'm okay now. Oh, good. I'm still here. I don't know. I don't think my screen froze. I don't know. It, it didn't tell me anything strange. So I'm just going to carry on. Um, wow, these tomatoes are really weird. I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at the stem. A very, it's like, wow, it's going almost all the way through. That's so strange. I wonder what kind of tomato it is. I think it said beefsteak at the store, but that's kind of weird. I'm not going to even think about that. Okay, so um, other exciting news of the day, which is not, it's exciting, but it's not good news, is um, apparently there's a cougar in our area. So, have to really watch the dog and um, make sure she's not out in the yard by herself. So, yeah, so that's kind of scary this week. Um, we always had a problem with bears, always. You know, there's always been bears around. And, um, yeah, maybe that's too many tomatoes. <laughs> um, but we've always had a problem with bears. And I haven't seen hardly any bears this year. Just a couple in the spring, a couple big ones. And they just moseyed on by, you know, without a problem. And they're usually pretty good that way. The bears are usually good. They just kind of, you know, go around looking for food and stuff. And, and um, but this cougar, it's been, it, it's, um, it's been catching deer apparently, which is kind of sad. I mean, it's a natural thing around the neighborhood is kind of not so good and also okay I'm gonna have to put some weight into it because I have I have to yeah that's good <laughs> that helps 
get some get some extra weight into it. Uh, but with the cougar, yeah, it's it's um. Oh, what was I gonna say? It's coming around quite a bit. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. I remember. There, we've noticed turkey vultures like around the property and around the neighborhood. And I didn't really, you know, put two and two together, but that is, uh, yeah, I guess that's why, because of the cougar. Okay, I need to stand up again. <laughs> you guys just love my, my shenanigans. Okay, let's get some, there we go. This is very good exercise. And so um, if you want to work with your upper arm strength, this is a good way to do it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm so funny today. I mean, the whole day is just gone funny. So um, yeah, well, the bowl's just fitting just right. So I am gonna do these last bit of tomatoes. And then we're going to move on to something else. Oh my goodness. What a day. It's going to be beautiful though. Sunny. Um, again, I'm just going to carry on. Whatever bits that you catch on me through the internet going on and off is going to be just perfect because <laughs> you're not going to miss too much today other than how to make the most fantastic mango salsa. And, um, oh yeah, so back to the fermentation. The fermentation is, um, in this particular case, to ferment the uh, beautiful mango salsa, all you have to do is to add the salt and basically with your ferments and the reason you want to ferment is to get that really good bacteria the gut bacteria and the um the uh enzymes or not enzymes uh probiotics and um and to increase your immune system health so the only thing we have to do with this and um i'm learning with a lot of things oh there's a big it didn't catch that big chunk of um, ginger. That's going to be a big surprise when you bite into that. Uh, we're just going to add a little bit of the salt. So the Himalayan salt. And um, so uh, typically when you're making a salt brine, it would be one tablespoon of salt to one quart of liquid or water. And so um, this looks to be roughly... I'm gonna guess that'd be about a quart, maybe a little bit more, um, but I don't want the salsa to be too salty. So I'm gonna add less than a spoon, and then the, it's super, super easy. The way it ferments is like way easy. You just leave it on the counter for a couple days. Check it, make sure that you check it because anything, um, like especially for the salsa, it's, it's not gonna be under a liquid, you know, so to speak. And typically when you're fermenting anything that sticks up out of the um, out of this is like a giant tablespoon so I'm just gonna go with like half actually I'm gonna go with less than that because I'm gonna keep an eye on it so the salt does um, it does uh, preserve it and stops it from molding but if you use too much salt then it will inhibit the um, the the uh, probiotics like the the lactic acid from forming right so it'll, it'll um, inhibit the bacteria from forming the good bacteria so you don't want to use too much salt so um so with this particular method with the salsa um you're going to check it like i'll check it tonight i'll check it tomorrow and you just keep checking it and if you can leave it on the counter three days um you know try a little bit every day if you can leave it for four or five days, it just turns absolutely fantastic. But you have to keep checking it. So typically when you're doing a ferment, like we have here, the um, this was the pickles uh, ferment with pickles and garlic and stuff. Um, anything that sticks up above the salt brine will tend 